Hello, hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you uh, some of the things that I do at home that really cost you very little money and always have on hand. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, if I don't have time, like sprouting, this is a good example, something that we do. We have a little container where we sprout, or you can use any kind of container. You can use a jar. Now, a bag of these seeds cost me about $5.59, and these are organic uh, seeds that we can simply, now this is a mixed brand, but we can simply throw some of these seeds and you get so many sprouts, you'd be surprised what a teaspoon or two teaspoons of these seeds will give you. And lately, <coughs> sorry, lately, because I was under the weather and I didn't have time to do it, I would buy them. And I'll give you an example, uh, $7.99 for these sprouts. There's really not that many in here. You would say, oh, that's a big container full of sprouts. But trust me, this is no more than one or two teaspoons of seeds that have been sprouted for you. So you can simply make these things at home yourself for a fraction of the price. And there's hardly any work involved. When I tell you there's no work involved, there's no work involved. So here we go. I'm going to show you how you can take some of these seeds and how you can sprout them yourself. Okay. So here's a container that I got, which, uh, as you could tell, has been used, but very simple. You take one of these things and you sprinkle your seeds on top, and then what you do is, as you water one, it waters the next level. So you could have different layers of different types of sprouts that you're growing. Uh, so it's a very simple system, and it's got a lid. I bought this, I think, on Amazon, and it really didn't cost that much. But you can have different layers of seeds that you can grow, and um, or sprouts, and uh, the water accumulates at the bottom. So uh, it has a little valve on the side, and what happens is you have your seeds all, all spread out into the container, and you... Uh, water the first layer and then it slowly goes down to the next layer and it goes down to the third and finally it drains and you empty out the water and you're okay for uh, your day. Usually in this type of container I only uh, wash them once because you don't want to make too many condensation or keep them too wet to seize because it might uh, make your sprouts once they start sprouting it might make them rot so you don't want to over water in this type of container but you could also do the upside down jar system there you go so where basically you're going to get a net sorry okay basically you're going to get something like a fine mesh where you're going to put it over your jar with an elastic and what you do is you rinse your seeds and then you dump everything and you leave it upside down on your sink and what that does is it keeps the seeds wet and uh, they start germinating on you and they start growing and then it depends on you on how long you want your seeds to grow and then simply what you do is you're going to once you, they got to a certain length like the ones that I have in here you simply rinse them in a colander and uh, you separate the seeds, let the seeds run down the drain, uh, the shells, and you're left with your uh, beautiful sprouts that you have grown. So this is one way where you can actually make some of these beautiful greens at home, and you can make a continuous growing, uh, you can continuously grow them. So as you see that one type of sprout is... Uh, is finishing on you you can start another jar and then you have more sprouts I have all kinds of beautiful seeds that I use uh, there's uh, the uh, <clears throat> sorry don't mind my voice uh, we have black black mustard seeds we have uh, fennel seeds these believe it or not taste like maple and your body even starts if you eat a lot of these sprouts or a lot of these fennel Greek seeds and if you taste these they actually taste like maple and if you eat a lot of this even your body starts sweet starts smelling sweet almost gives out a maple a maple scent on your body so there's so many ways you can sprout them there's the jar there's that container I told you or if you have an old container at home something like this one what I would do is I would poke holes on the 
on the bottom uh, on this side I would poke some holes I would put maybe a paper towel at the bottom and then I will sprinkle my seeds on top and when I water it the water drains out and then you're left with just the wet seeds in your container and you keep it closed so that maybe leave a couple of holes for air but what it does is it has a little bit of air exchange and you can grow some of the seeds that way so you could use an old container you could use a jar or you could go out and spend money like I did with this one which I use I use sometimes not all the time because if I'm only making what kind of one or two types of sprouts I don't even use this one because I've got to find a place to put it sometimes so but I do use it it's not that I don't use it so uh, and here we are we've got some beautiful wheat berries where you could actually grow some beautiful wheat grass if you're into juicing uh, wheatgrass, you could also use these. If you have lentil, you can take some of those lentils and you could throw those in a jar. And let me tell you, a little bit of lentil down here. Say you put this much lentil down here, it's going to fill up this jar. If not more, you're going to need a bigger jar because those things are going to grow on you. And they have more nutrients than uh, the lentil itself because they're like powerhouses. Uh, don't forget, each one of those little shoots is a plant that's going to make lentils. So, very nutritious. So, there's so many things you can do to always have some greens in the house and not cost you an arm and a leg. This is crazy because this is done like in one day, easy. If not even sooner, like one lunchtime because come lunchtime, if my daughter and I are doing a, a Buddha bowl, this is gone already, so that's like $8 already. So if you can, yes, <clears throat> the convenience of having it already done, yes, of course. But if someone is there because uh, they don't want to, they can't afford, not everybody could go out and say, you know what, I'm going to buy uh, those sprouts for $8. And tomorrow I'm going to buy another package because 8 times 5 or 8 times 7 it's expensive so if you want to eat sprouts you can make them at home and trust me when I tell you it doesn't take long to make it doesn't take long to make now here's something else that I also do remember I, I showed you my sweet potato greens uh, I have a video up where I uh, take a sweet potato put it in a jar and I let the greens grow and those greens are very nutritious they taste just like spinach I'm going to show you, look at these beautiful shoots. Now, these are beets, believe it or not. And you get these beautiful red, look how nice they are. Isn't that beautiful? You get these beautiful red and green uh, shoots that you can just simply take them, throw them in a salad, and these are going to continue growing. Let me tell you, look at that. You see, you've got shoots growing in the middle. There's shoots growing on the side. Look at this is a new one that's growing there. So this is going to continue growing for me all summer long. And I've had this uh, this winter. So as you cut them, they're going to keep growing. So you could cut them here and let those little ones grow. Or you can just cut them right down to here and just let them grow again for you. And if you don't have any pots and soil, you can just take a little beet and just put it in uh, a glass of water and you're gonna see it starts making beautiful shoots on top there so there you go very easy and you get lots of stuff and you say you know what what's all of that gonna do for that's like a meal but you know if you're making a sandwich or if you're making a wrap and you just want to use a little bit uh, you always have them continue, continuously growing for you. So it really is nice to have them handy. And then in the winter, sorry, in the uh, summer, you could take these out and they go crazy big outside. So uh, it's just a nice way to have some extra greens lying around in the house. So it's very simple and again, like I said, just a great way to have some greens always handy at home or something to do. Uh, I know that it's always nice to have some beautiful fresh produce growing at home. And like I said, if you don't have a pot of her, uh, pot of her lying around in the house, you do have water and you do have a glass. Uh, take a beet and just put it in there and watch it. And you could do the same thing also with carrots. <clears throat> Sorry, carrots will grow beautiful green shoots on the top that you could actually throw in a salad. And yeah, even if you're using most of the carrots, you're... Um, 
even if you use most of the carrot and you save just the carrot top, you could actually plant that. And that will, believe it or not, make you some beautiful green shoots on top that you could consume. It might not continuously make it like the beet. The beet will continuously make uh, shoots for you until the beet itself rots. And that takes a very long time for it to, uh, to rot away. I know I had some beets uh, all of last year and uh, all of the w uh, winter. Um, it basically rotted... Uh, not, like not long ago, I had a couple in this pot that just it it was finished. There was nothing. There was nothing else for it to give to uh, to give to me. So basically, what it did is it uh, rotted and it went back into the soil and it became soil for my new beets to grow. So those are simple ways of um, growing some beautiful beets, uh, beet greens that you could, like I said, throw in a salad. You could throw it in a wrap. Uh, you could throw it in a stir fry. There's so many ways you can do it. Now, here's a container I have that my daughter picked up some sushi. And what I like about this, and this is why I kept it, is it has these small little wells that will either hold water or drain water if there's way too much of it. So what I'm going to do is just poke some holes in here. And you can do that with just a little sharp knife. You just want to hook some holes where if there's an excess water, you're going to be able to just drain it out. And there's another thing I like to do is I like to disinfect. If I'm going to grow anything that has seeds, I disinfect it with a little bit of alcohol. And here I'm going to put a couple of holes or slits, right? I'm trying to do this without cutting myself because lately between carving my knives and... Uh, just making dinner, I'm always poking a hole in my hand because I'm a little... My husband calls me the butcher sometimes. I'm a little rough with myself sometimes. Okay, so here we go. Just cutting some slits, and that's what's good about this container or any kind of plastic container you have. And that helps with drainage because that's one thing you don't want with your... Uh, when you're growing sprouts is you don't want them... Uh, you don't want them sitting in water. So what I'm going to do is take some alcohol. I'm going to spray this container. There we go. Just give it a spray. And that's going to help uh, disinfect. And all I have is a little bit of alcohol. And then I'm going to take some paper towel. Probably this way. There we go. And I'm going to put that in my tray I'm gonna try and fit it here we go and I'm gonna just kinda spray that also because you don't want anything that's gonna contaminate your seeds and we're gonna let this dry so you're gonna put this aside somewhere and we're just gonna let it dry and we're not gonna touch it and once it's dry we're gonna take some seeds and we're gonna sprinkle it uh, first we're gonna spray some water and then we're going to sprinkle some seeds on top and we're just going to let them to start germinating. Now something like this, what you can do is if you have some clean water, you can just spray it every day rather than running water. So if you have a little spray bottle, once your seeds are on your and this is nice and dry, um, you could also spray your hands, make sure that you don't have any anything that's going to contaminate those seeds and let them rot on you because if you do see some seeds rotting uh, or if you see that you're growing like mold at the bottom uh, then you don't have enough air ventilation or you don't uh, have enough drainage and those are not going to be good for you to eat but like I said this is something you could try at home and if you don't have any of these seeds that I have here uh, that are uh, sprouting seeds that are either mixed seeds or whatever you could simply take some lentil if you have at home and you could start making lentil inside a jar like this and that's very easy lentil goes in put a little mesh on top first I put them to soak for one day the lentils especially because lentils uh, are, it's a bigger seed so I'm gonna take my lentils and I'm gonna put them in here put my net over it and I add water and I'm gonna let them soak once your lentils have soaked for a day, you're going to take it, you're going to drain it, and you're going to add fresh water, swirl, swirl it around, and remember you always have that net on top. That net never comes off. It only comes off when you want to eat your sprouts. 
So you're going to have your mesh on top and you're going to drain that water and you're going to leave it at a 45 in your uh, sink basket or drain. And it's going to have enough circulation and it's going to start sprouting. You're going to see your, they're going to sprout in no time at all. In a couple of days, you're going to have sprouted lentil. If the sprouts are very small, you can still eat them as sprout a lentil you can even cook them if you want but if you want to let them become green shoots like these ones then you're going to let them grow until you like the length and that's how you're going to do your lentil but if you're going to do anything that's like a smallish seed you want to use um you want to use a paper towel so they don't just clog up on one corner because then you're going to have like a bird's nest and they're going to be hard to rinse i mean you can still do it in a jar like this but it's just going to be harder for you to rinse and if you get them too wet then it, they're going to start rotting on you so you could try doing it this way and then they all grow up nice and tall on you and you could come here every day with a little bottle like i said you need a little spray bottle and you just spray them and you've got your own little garden of greens that you can uh, grow and put in salads you could put them in sandwiches you could just pop them in your mouth they're such such amazing power tools and if you do have a container with a lid you could always use it that uh, it sits on and uh, just an easy way so if you uh, it's an easy way of sprouting so if you have a container like this something that you picked up some sushi uh, don't throw it away try and keep it maybe as a sprouting vessel that you can use so that's another way of doing it. So I'm going to wait till this dries up a little and then we're going to spread some seeds on here and we're going to spray with water and we're going to let them germinate. I'm going to have some delicious sprouts ready for me in a couple of days that I can actually um, eat and enjoy. So there you go. Just a small video to show you that it's very simple to make your own sprouts. Very simple to make some beautiful uh, beet greens that you could have handy like for a whole summer and winter uh, they will continuously grow they're going to keep making new shoots all along the beet here and they're just going to grow you're going to have like a bouquet of green shoots that you could put in salads and anything that you want to enjoy black mustard seed paper is dry And that's how simple it is to grow some beautiful sprouts. So I hope you like this video, guys. And if you do, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, leave a comment. Tell me why you don't like it. And guess what, guys? I'm going to see you in my next video. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.